Hey everyone, it's Joe Carroll here in Nashville, Tennessee on behalf of Produce Like a Pro and Warm Audio. Today we're announcing the WA MPX tube preamplifier based on the 50s circuitry. I won't go into too much detail because I know that Warren already did, but he sent one out to us, thought it'd be really cool to get our perspective on it. And it was a good day for that because I had a kind of an Americana bluegrass trio in today. So I had a, a, um, a female vocalist, I had a high harmony female vocal, and I had a lower harmony male so we can kind of hear it on different sources as well as the acoustic guitar. So we recorded each one of them in isolation so we could take a listen to it and play it back for you guys. So here is Patrick on the acoustic guitar and uh, I have the WA-251 on him. And this guitar he described as bright. And you will hear that it doesn't sound overly bright after it's being you know, passed through the circuit. It, it really kind of mellowed it out. So let's listen to that example. I wish I could play like that. I, I kind of wish, secretly wish I had that kind of hair too, but uh, you'll notice that I use the 251, which is a brighter microphone on the, on the acoustic for the, for the mono mic that was hitting the WAMPX and the guitar Patrick described as one of his brighter guitars. And you'll notice the brighter guitar going through the WA251, which is a brighter microphone, but still kind of a mellow sound. It wasn't, it was not harsh whatsoever. And I, you know, obviously that's the, the, the nature of this tube circuit. It's a very fat circuit, very full circuit. I used the high gain setting. So I had plenty of, uh, you know, all three tubes were engaged. So it was, a, it was, you know, the fattest sound, so to speak. And I, I and I rode the gain up till, till he was, you know, right around, right around zero. And it, I, I thought it sounded great as uh, I hope you did too. So now let's listen to Haley. Haley is on the lead vocal. Take it away. Four cold walls against my will At least I know he's lying still Four cold walls without parole Lord have mercy on my soul Well, I kind of wish I had Haley's hair too <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> that said, I, <laughs> but anyway, you'll hear that it sounded great. It was, it was rich. It was full. That was a 67, which is, I intentionally used the 67 on all three vocalists. So you could hear, you know, a side-by-side -side comparison. Plus it's kind of a neutral microphone as far as, you know, it's not got a hyped high end. It doesn't has a, doesn't have a hyped low end. It's kind of a, a great neutral sounding microphone. And, and, and again, I used the high gain setting on all of them. I felt it just was working. I did use the high pass filter, but not the low pass filter, which is a cool function. I'm sure Warren told you about if you're going for a, a really vintage thing, you can start rolling that top end off. But I, I, I thought it sounded great it, on gain wise on her, as well as the next two vocalists who will hear input wise, I was looking as, as soon as I could start hearing the two, you know, saturate, uh, too much, you know, I, I would just back it down a little bit. It was literally that simple. I kept the. I kept the trim uh, all the way op wide open, but that's a cool feature that we do have a trim knob because if I was looking for grit, you know, let's say it was an electric guitar, drum rooms, you know, something I was really, I, I could turn the output down and really drive the input and really get some grit. In fact, I, I was playing around with it and um, the grit was very, was very colorful. It was, it was, it was kind of fun. Honestly, I can, I can't wait to use it on some, um, like a, like a, what we call the crotch mic, you know, or the gack mic on a snare drum. Uh, that would, that, that's going to be a really, really fun use for this. But, um, today I didn't have a snare drum. So let's listen to the next vocalist. This is Haley. We'll call her Haley number two on the high soprano part. Four cold walls against my will. At least I know he's lying still. Four cold walls without parole lord have mercy on my soul 
Okay, I won't bore you with any more hair comments. We'll just talk about the mic. But you'll notice, uh, again, Haley has a high soprano voice. And I thought, I thought the chain did a really nice job of not ever sounding harsh whatsoever. You know, as she would hit her high notes, you'll hear it's very, it's still full and it's round. You know, you can hear the tube mic into a tube preamplifier doing the tube thing. It's, it's, it's warm, it's rich. But again, same, same thing. Gain-wise, I was keeping it very comfortable just below very much tube saturation, kind of, you know, on the VU meter, a little, um, you know, uh, a little below zero, to be quite honest. When I got up past that into the red, I could really, I could hear it, you know, with the high gain setting, which again, it's a cool function, but I didn't want that on the vocals for this song. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Now let's listen to Max on the male vocals. Four cold walls against my will At least I know he's lying still Four cold walls without parole Lord have mercy on my soul That was Max on the male vocals. Uh, thank you, Max. And you guys could probably hear the same thing that I said about the others. It, it's round, it's warm, it's full. It's doing that tube thing. Uh, so my overall impressions of the unit it, it, are, are very positive. Probably my two biggest takeaways on the positive side were um, the high gain setting was a lot of fun. I, I know we don't need 90 decibels of gain very much anymore. I mean, the original piece was designed that way because of the low output of the old ribbon mics. I get that. But I like the fact that we can turn the high gain setting off and we, we're, we're still engaging two tubes. So it's still a very harmonically rich tube sounding circuit, you know, uh, that, that would be a good for probably 80% of the things I'm recording. But every once in a while, I want even more. I, I want more fatness. I want more of that second order harmonic. And so I can engage that and just, you know, just roll the, the, the gain down to where it's still clean, but it's, but it's a little fatter. It is a different sound. So I, I recommend playing with that. I, I really did like that option being built into it. The other thing, it was very interesting was the tape saturation feature. Uh, I, I will tell you that um, it definitely is going to work best on stuff that has a, a pretty, pretty even dynamic range. Think of an electric guitar being played through an amplifier, um, you know, where it's, it's not real percussive and it's, um, it's kind of already squashed down, right? A uh, bass guitar that's not being played real percussive is going to be really cool to experiment through that. Uh, vocals, for example, today, pre, you know, pre-compression, um, um, acoustic guitar that's real percussive and spiky. Um, it, it, it's a little too much and I expected that it would be, uh, I was warned in advance that the, the, you know, that's not what it was really created for where it was cool. It was very cool. So I recommend playing with that. You know, it's just all about finding the sweet spot, but I, I, I like that that's built in there. I mean, you know, that's something we don't, we don't have, I don't have any, any other piece that I own. So anyway, Warren, thanks so much for asking us to give our opinion or Mario. Thanks for sending this 